good evening friends um thank you for joining us so my job today in the next few minutes is to take you through two abstracts both of which pertains to immunotherapy in breast cancer the first one is uh, is the jepar newer study jepar newer study this is a randomized phase 2 uh, trial of the use of immunotherapy durvalumab in early triple negative breast cancer now the, the background of this study is that by the time this study was designed we already knew that the checkpoint inhibitor therapy along with chemotherapy is active in triple negative breast cancers and uh, and when you, there were other drugs like atezolizumab and pembrolizumab which had already moved into uh, phase 2 and phase 3 trials and we and they consistently showed that there is an improvement in pathological complete response when checkpoint inhibitor was added to chemotherapy the im passion 031 study showed that when immunotherapy was added the path cr went up to 57% and the kane key note 522 showed us that when immunotherapy was added to a four drug regimen which included platinum the path cr rate went up to 65% so based on this this trial was designed jepar nuvo which was a randomized phase 2 trial uh, and the, if you see in the trial design just after randomization for the first two weeks there was a window of opportunity there was a there was a run in period where only durvalumab was given and uh, subsequently a repeat biopsy was performed and then patient started on the standard chemotherapy which was weekly paclitaxel for 12 weeks followed by dose dense ec into 4 and the randomization was to durvalumab 1500 mg versus placebo the the pathological complete response at surgery was the primary endpoint of the study the invasive disease free survival distant disease free survival and overall survival were important secondary endpoints initially when the trial was designed they had designed the trials so that the analysis would be done at 43 events however subsequently the statistical plan was changed to perform the analysis at uh, a median of 3.5 years of follow up now this is early breast cancer trial so you see the disease the, the disease and the patient characteristics were as expected all of them were triple negative breast cancer so almost 84% of them were grade 3 not positive patients about 30% t3 t4 was were only about 8 8% 8, 8 3.5% so so triple negative early breast cancers and the randomization if you see the consort figure about 88 patient went into the durvalumab arm of which all of them had surgery of the 86 patient who went into the placebo arm one of them refused surgery and at follow up there were 12 events in the durvalumab arm and 22 events including 15 deaths in the placebo arm now this trial was presented published earlier in 2019 with the patsia data was available and we see as expected when durvalumab was added the path cr went up from 44% to 53.4% and if you see the uh, the forest plot the benefit of path cr was predom was seen in almost every patient uh, every subgroup of patients however when the some of the patients when they had this window that is one dose of durvalumab was given before they seems to have derived more benefit in terms of path cr but then this when the study was presented last as as co meeting the authors presented the the event uh, data and then when you see the distant relapses there was almost 13 relapses as compared to six relapses in the placebo group so the almost there was a big difference over there and if you look at the invasive local regional relapses there was five versus four now if you look at the kaplan meier curves if you see all invasive disease free survival events the 3 year absolute was about 85.6% versus 77.2% and that is because two of these patients actually had contralateral invasive cancer and if you remove them and if you just look at distance disease free survival the 3 year was at impressive 91.7% in patients who received durvalumab versus 78.4% and uh, this was statistically significant and if you look at overall survival at 3 years that was 95.2% versus 83.5% so so these results are pretty similar the kaplan meier curves look very similar to the key note 522 data and uh, the 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 thing about this trial was that durvalumab immunotherapy was actually given only in neoadjuvant period 
there was no maintenance thrombolytomab given after surgery and in spite of that the authors were able to show the study found that the difference in overall survival is distant disease free survival and invasive disease free survival was significant now if you look at the forest plot here with the kind of patients who derive more benefit as compared to others but there is there is no differential uh, response as seen all the delta was actually towards favoring the valumab and the, the benefit was more pronounced if the tumor was pdl1 positive also the the outcomes in terms of overall survival and distant disease survival was excellent if the patient developed uh, patient achieved a path cr rates and if you look at the absolute numbers here the invasive disease survival in patients who had a path cr was was almost 95.5% and there were as, as i told you the two events were the contralateral invasive cancers which were treated and and if you look at the overall survival in patients who had path cr was 100% distant disease free survival of 100% in patients who received chemotherapy with durvalumab and to compare that to patients who did not have a pathological complete response in the placebo uh, the the invasive disease free survival was 70% as opposed to uh, 76% in patients who had who had received durvalumab so in conclusion uh, this these are the authors conclusion that that there seems to be a survival advantage of using a shortened uh, duration of immunotherapy along with standard chemotherapy uh and therefore this definitely requires uh testing in larger uh, phase 3 trial and this is consistent with what we have seen with keynote 522 data so my take on this is that this at least tells us that uh, that immunotherapy can improve outcomes in early triple negative breast cancer second thing is it also is an exciting uh, area of research that how much of immunotherapy is actually required and and if you are able to achieve a path cr in 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 just a short and duration of uh, chemoimmunotherapy then maybe that maintenance uh, uh, immunotherapy can can be uh, omitted and and we look forward to other research to confirm the same data now the second abstract i have to discuss is uh, is is let's be switching gears now to advanced disease this is in metastatic lobular breast cancer where uh, it was a small study single arm study where authors Uh, was studying giving carboplatin as an immune uh, induction along with immunotherapy which is atezolizumab and the design of the trial was is a phase 2 simon staged uh, design now the rationale for combining carboplatin in 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 uh, uh, luminal breast cancer was that some of the luminal breast cancers have actually increased expression of immune related genes and uh, and it has been shown that that in cancers where there is increased expression of immune related genes platinum does uh, increase sensitivity of immunotherapy and that was confirmed in the mouse model so therefore this is the first in human study in this situation so the statistical analysis was the authors actually planned that you needed at least three patients which to be progression free at about 6 months when uh, they would be getting single agent carboplatin with atezolizumab and um, and and they were all invasive uh, uh, lobular cancers now if you see the kind of patients who they had to screen about 37 patients to to enroll 23 patients and um, the reason why there were some dropouts were because these patients had advanced disease they had other comorbidities or they had rapid clinical progression or they were unfit for the study now if you see the kind of patients who went into the trial was as expected uh, of note is that there were about five patients who were er negative or actually were triple negative so 22% of these patients were luminal triple negatives and about 80% of these patients were er positive now half of them were pre treated with chemotherapy one to two lines and there were other half which were treatment naive and uh, all again half of them were uh, uh, most of them were actually uh, pre treated uh, patients in the adjuvant uh, who had received adjuvant chemotherapy now if you see the results now this being a single arm study what we are looking at is a 24 weeks pfs that is what is shown by the dotted line and if you see there were four patients who crossed 24 uh, weeks uh, pfs and of note interestingly of those four patients if you see the green lines is actually triple negatives so the 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 luminal triple negatives there were three out of out of five in the study who actually crossed 24 weeks and and therefore this study met met its primary endpoint uh, of 
of at least three patients causing 24 weeks and therefore it's labeled as a positive study. But my take on it is that if you have a triple negative uh, group where carboplatin itself is an active drug, whether how much of this benefit is actually due to atezolizumab and how much of it is due to carboplatin is something which is unclear in this small sample size. And, uh, and the interesting thing to note here was if you look at the star, the first responses, most of the first responses were seen in about uh, about eight weeks time uh, in patients who were who were going to uh, benefit and they were all partial responses so 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 in conclusion the objective response rate of 90 19% the clinical benefit rate of 30% makes this study a positive study according to the author's conclusion but in my mind uh, this is just uh, uh, a hypothesis generating uh, data and this, this needs confirmation in larger trials, especially in ER, pop, ER positive lobular cancers, which comprises the majority. And whether immunotherapy plays has any role in ER positive breast cancer, we are still, it is unclear. So with that, I'll conclude. Thank you for your attention.